My name is uh, Joanne Land and I'm chair of 999 Call for the NHS and uh, one of the Darlow mums who walked 300 miles from Jarrow to London to protest at the privatisation of the NHS. And um, as I look around me today, I can see many of the people who joined us for some of that march or uh, supported it, for supporting us on the way. Uh, I can see at least one 300 mile, where's Trish? <laughs> Trish is right in front of me. Trish walked 300 miles. I'll let you into a secret though. I did spend some of the march driving the luggage van. And as a result, I maybe wasn't quite as sick of marching as some of my comrades. So in 2016, when the sustainability and transformation plans were announced, and they were divided into 44 footprint areas, I thought, footprints, maybe there's a gimmick here. And so we went on a 110 mile march between the hospitals and our STP footprint. And the day we got to Hartlepool, um, Hartlepool Borough Council leaked the uh, STP plan. And uh, the day we, we, the, the march finished and we got back to Darlington, um, the uh, CCG announced they were suspending uh, the consultation on uh, closure of uh, services at Darlington and Stockton. And that consultation is still postponed 18 months later and the A&E departments are still open. And I'm telling you this because it is possible to throw spanners into the works. It is possible to slow down and stop things if we take action together uh, like we are doing today. One crucial point that emerged from our efforts to unearth this, the STP plans is that NHS England constantly, constantly, I'm sure, I'm sure you're very familiar with this, they constantly shift the goalposts and they try and keep their aims hidden and they couch everything in terms that conceal what is really happening to the NHS. The early plans for the accountable care organisations were in the STP plans, but NHS England have realised that accountable care organisation rings alarm bells because of the connotations of uh, being a US import. What is clear is that we believe that NHS England are playing fast and loose with the law and introducing all kinds of workarounds in order to try and establish accountable care models in the NHS that are neither needed nor wanted. At this point, I'd like to quote Neil Foss, who is a Penzance 38 Degrees campaigner, who was also working with Lee Day. Um, and he said, they seem to think that if they call it something like a partnership or an integrated care service, we'll be fooled into thinking we don't have to worry but the elements and the mechanisms of the American ACO model are still in play. That is a huge worry for all of us. So now they call them integrated care partnerships, or place-based care, or vertical and horizontal integration, anyone? <laughs> Whatever that is. But what we say is, if the plants in your area have got these features and fixed budgets, and, uh, and, and managed care and restricted care, we're, we're saying that you know, that is the accountable care model and it must be resisted. So if it looks like a duck and it walks like a duck and it sounds like a duck, what is it? Yeah! <laughs> I'll squeak your ducks. The, uh, the 999 Judicial Review won't actually be on whether ACOs are a good idea. It will be judged on a very tightly focused point of law. But that point of law, the payment mechanism, is a crucial one when it comes to the harm that accountable care organisations will do. Accountable care organisations will be financially based, not clinically based. Think accountable as in accountants and not accountable to patients. That is why whatever happens today and in the weeks and months after, we have to stop this threat to the NHS. Thank you all so much for coming today. It's wonderful to see so many of you today. Um, you can uh, join us in court later on. Oh, we've got Melissa. Oh, yeah, we're here. We thought you weren't going to make it. So we have one more, one more speech and um, then uh, we're going to uh, end with a minute silence after Melissa and then, and then the choir uh, will, will join us for another song. So thank you very much.
Hi everybody, um, some of you may know my face but many of you may not, so I come from Lincolnshire, um, we had the campaign that fights to save Grantham A&E, &E, um, which was closed overnight 20 months ago, and um, we also fight to um, save our NHS from the STPs and ultimately the, the ACOs, ACS, ICS, whatever they want to call them. Um, so we, we are fully strong supporters of 999 Call for the NHS and their fight um, and particularly the judicial review here today because it's important to all of us no matter where we're from in this country um, these systems, whatever they want to call them, are being put into place in every single area of this country um, they're deceitful in Lincolnshire. They they deny all. Um, they deny the fact that they're actually setting up systems where populations um, will be held on limited budgets, um, and we will be restricted in what healthcare we receive. Just to touch on a few things that are happening in Lincolnshire, which links directly to this. Um, quite a lot of GPs are being incentivised to. Um, uh, make patients go privately as opposed to receive services on the NHS so patients are being told uh, with poorly children poorly poorly themselves that they can't receive health care locally on the NHS that the waiting times are too long and that, that they should go private in order to receive their health care in a timely manner and that's just disgraceful um, I, I am a, a very proud member of 999's committee um, they've worked completely every night and day for the last god knows how long to get to where we are today and this is a really really important day to all of us if we can win this judicial review it's it's a it's a step in the right direction it isn't game over we've still got a huge fight ahead of us but this will be one step one drop in our ocean that will give us the faith and the hope to carry on fighting the long hard fight that we fight every day so i'd like to thank you all for coming um, and i'm here on behalf of myself my county and my children because it's our children's future that we're fighting for here today and if we don't win and it it's their lives that, uh, that yeah, it's going to impact if we do win then we can tell our children that we fought hard and we won thank you very much Woo! Thank you.